Hi everyone, I thought I would do a follow-up video of my BMW 120i conversion. Just sort of to show how it's been running after a couple of years. Right now I've got it on charge. It's power inlet, charge enable switch. Bit of silicon there. You've got the factory, the battery in the factory position is lead acid. DC, DC converter, mean well. And then the Ziva EBMS, a couple more BMSs, battery pack there, and there's a couple more underneath where the old fuel tank was. There's the charger. Charging away, TC charger. Have a look under the car. You can see the two packs where the fuel tank was. One there. And one there, and there is the BMW X1 diff, the 4.44 ratio, which gives it, you know, better pickup than the original 338. So here's under the bonnet, and. Initially, you can see the power steering, it's electric, it's aftermarket. Got a relay for the vacuum, power the vacuum switch, the brake booster, and then the power steering. This power steering draws about 60 amps apparently, so it needs its own relay. You've got the Nano Feng reverse contactor. This allows you to use the switch to drive the motor in forward and reverse. And there's a fan just to keep it a bit cooler. It seems to get kind of hot. And then the Ziva controller. Yeah. Thousand amp. doesn't get too hot although it's got a water cooled aluminium block underneath it which yeah it doesn't get hot at all with that and then you've got the motor you can see there in the tunnel that's where the old gearbox was and then the brake pump mounted there and then that runs into the brake booster which is just there pretty handy and this is the main contactor a few BMS's connected to the 28 cell pack at the front got a kill switch Traction circuit, 400 amp, fuse, I moved the, I got rid of the Prius heifer throttle and replaced with a Hall Effect one that I got off eBay which I think it's a forklift one or something and that seems to work a bit better. Um, the, I mean it used to be a manual and I hacksawed off the 
the clutch pedal because it's just not needed anymore. I moved the EVMS monitor from there to here because the taco doesn't actually work anyway and neither does the old fuel gauge so you know this basically goes in place of that anyway uh, right now it's charging and you can cycle through you can see each cell voltage average temp min max cell voltages and then more details about the cells currently i'm charging at 10 amp max but the tc charger in the back will actually go up to at 20 amps i usually charge at 15 amps even on 10 amp circuit it doesn't seem to bother it and it just charges a bit quicker This is the controls. It, it was a manual, but as it's a direct drive, the manual stick was removed and you can just basically use a rocker switch. So it's a double throw. So you got reverse, drop it down for drive, and then this is kind of like neutral. And it's safe so you know you don't ac accidentally bang it while you're driving and go into reverse it's a government regulation I believe this is the low voltage emergency off switch um, it basically it'll shut down the traction circuit through the EVMS. This is the inertia switch, which is basically another government regulation. Which, you know, if you have a crash, it'll shut, also shut down the traction circuit to uh, to help if you know the batteries are going to electrocute someone. So this is the aftermarket deck that I installed um, it's uh, a bit better than the stock one alright so let's take it out for a spin key still uses the factory ignition system battery level, voltage, current, draw at this time. I turn the lights off and that should drop a little bit but as you turn the power steering you can see it uses a bit of current even though mainly it's being drawn from the lead acid battery. You got your cell voltages, all that and that's basically as you accelerate, the uh, current goes up substantially. Put it in reverse. Like that. It's very quiet. Very quiet, you only hear the electric power steering and the brake pump coming on. Nothing else really makes noise. Then forward. Off we go. It's nice and quick.
So right now the instrument cluster is saying that I have no fuel, which I guess is correct. And it's also saying there's a gearbox fault. I guess because there's no gearbox.